Hello, this is Tommy from Omo Office and we are watching Grasser Production. Stay tuned. Welcome to Grasser Production. My name is Christina and uh, we are meeting Tommy from Amorphous. Hi. Yes, hello. How no. are you? Oh, I'm fine, <laughs> thanks. Uh, after the day off, it's always a little bit like, yeah. takes time to get to the mode. Mm. So okay. you, you came straight out of the gym, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to try to do something like okay. normal stuff mm. in the tour okay. as well. So. How was your day off? Uh, it was fine. We were here, actually. So I uh, didn't do anything special except going to eat and sleep and sleep, watching yeah. movies so okay. something yeah so yeah. i i checked your facebook and instagram and i saw like big crowd here and sold out shows there and how how do you actually compensate that in your brain like uh, it, it must be huge yeah <laughs> of course it feels it feels great like it's never been like this like in europe it's that so many gigs are like sold out at once mm. So, uh, but I think it's a great package of bands, yeah. and uh, uh, all the bands uh, have a like strong album mm -hmm. out. So, uh, yeah, I just have to be grateful from yeah. every gig. So yeah. it doesn't something like we get used to it. Just like uh, have to appreciate it. Yeah. So as long as it continues. Is it like getting harder over the years? So when you're like getting older, to have those touring mm. circles. Uh, yes and no. I think uh, we are not partying that much <laughs> anymore than we used to okay. when we were younger. So that but made you it. did. Back then. We did, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that, uh, if we do that nowadays, uh, we would be dead like after two weeks. So, mm -hmm. but uh, in some way, you just have some routines what you do do in the day daytimes and uh, uh, and of course the crew is very like professional, so it's getting all the all the time easier to us and uh, so i don't know it, it's just like lifestyle we have used to during the years so it's something like we don't see any other <laughs> other life like this mm -hmm. so uh, yeah i don't know okay. but of course yeah long tours are of course you have to be away from home it's always the, you, you cannot get used to that like too much yeah would you do it again when being 18 again? Yeah, 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 I think so. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I think I, I was thinking that when I was 12 and got my first guitar first time that this is what I want, want to do and uh, I'm lucky to be in this kind of situation. So mm -hmm. most likely I would do it again. Would you have changed anything? Oh yes, of course, from the past. Drinking, maybe. <laughs> yeah, from the like past <laughs> things, but I don't know. If it, was, it felt felt like what the rock rock and roll bands do at the time. Like in nineties, we were under or twenty or something when we did first tours. So mm. of course, that was part of the game. Part of the game, <laughs> in a way, yes. But uh, nothing radical. I think everybody, any, uh, everything what we have done is like affecting what we are doing now and mm -hmm. how we are so uh, I don't know if it would be any better mm -hmm. or worse to uh, change something yeah okay uh, you have to explain one thing for me you got a, a social media post which uh, says LG Petrov access to fridge <laughs> denied what was that about <laughs> well LG is a long uh, long time friend of ours mm. and uh, it was in Stockholm right yeah yeah, yeah. That, that was happening but uh, I think it it was first time in '94 when we toured with Entombed in States, and uh, they had this one song where it was a long instrumental part, and uh, with Entombed, and uh, he always came to our backstage to drink our beers and <laughs> smoke <laughs> our cigarettes. So I think it started from there. It's just like a joke, but uh, yeah, we offered him some beer. Anyway. Yeah, but still he was yeah. drinking and standing in front of the fridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nice. Uh, let's talk a bit about your album uh, Queen of Time. So uh, the artist who created the artwork for you, um, did you give him any input or did he just like listen to the songs and uh, reading the lyrics and then creating the artwork? I think both. Esa would be like best 
person to answer this because Esa is always very much involved with the okay. artist. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's happening like he got his lyrics and uh, he tries to take some uh, things from there and there to the cover. And uh, I don't know how much, how many emails you had between like band or Esa and mm -hmm. uh, the artist before mm -hmm. it's finished. But uh, yeah, I think it both his view and uh, our ideas some of but it looks pretty awesome yeah i, I agree yeah. yeah what was the uh, weapon called again of the the finnish god what is he called uko uko oh yeah uh, yeah what is that for a kind of a weapon uh, what weapon no actually uko is like a, it's like a, some kind of a pagan god <laughs> yeah, yeah but he like. has like this uh, kind of what is it a hammer What? Oh yeah, yeah, you mean that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's Ukon Basara. Yeah, that's like uh, it's Ukon kind of uh, Basara. It's like okay. uh, yeah, it's like hammer. Yeah, okay. it's kind of similar than uh, Thor's hammer, but uh, mm -hmm. I think they have a little bit like different kind of meaning. In uh, Ukon Basara, there is like uh, earth and uh, then uh, two ways to up and blah blah blah. But okay. yeah, but that's been our like symbol from mm -hmm. the start. It's like a Kalevala, okay. Kalevala thing. So okay. Um, so your producer uh, Jens Bogren, uh, he wanted to, uh, or he told in an interview that he wanted the album to sound like a movie soundtrack in some way. Um, is that therefore that you sometimes uh, pitch songs a half tone up? Yeah, we did some, yeah, but that's what we have done like earlier as well mm -hmm. because of the Tommy's voice is like normally studio is the latest place when you notice that okay this is not actually going well with his tones mm -hmm. so uh, yeah we have been doing things like that and also uh, also played like a little bit faster some of the songs because mm -hmm. Jens thought they were like too lazy and because normally <laughs> because they're getting old <laughs> maybe yeah 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 that's what he called it like old man's tempo so <laughs> But this yeah. time, actually, it wasn't that bad. I think we were prepared, uh, uh, prepared better to have him like the tempo. Because, it, yeah, because you because know him. The, yeah, because yeah, we did that. Because he's like always kicking ass on you. Yes, yes. But I like to work with him. He's yeah. like uh, totally the seventh member of the band. Okay. And uh, because he he know uh, what he wants in your music. Yeah, I think if we would disagree about some things we wouldn't, wouldn't use him as a producer so uh, i think we share quite same kind of like taste of music and uh, he's got his like uh, like kind of outsider ears mm -hmm. to have new ideas which we don't even think about that much mm -hmm. so so all those uh, orchestra elements were like his ideas mm -hmm. at first place and uh, yeah we trusted him yeah. and uh, yeah and you also have a choir right yeah. Yeah, yeah there is mm. that's also uh, organized cool by idea. yeah 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 that's something what we never had before so mm -hmm. and Jens came also up with that idea right yeah yeah mm -hmm. okay yeah we only knew that Jens said that he has some some uh, uh, ideas about this and this and uh, we were asking what and uh, you will hear <laughs> <laughs> okay. but yeah yeah I think it fits very okay. well yeah. and uh, it takes some way the band like a little bit new level as well yeah of course yeah so um with queen of time uh opuline uh, mm. came back to amorphous mm. why is that can you tell me something about that well uh niku uh, said that he's gonna leave after the la last tour uh, we started to think like who, who that could be and uh, mm -hmm. opu was honestly the only one we could think about because we didn't have want to have any like uh, 20 years old great player but like session guy we wanted to have like some somebody who's like one of the six mm -hmm. and uh, also we didn't want to uh, start stealing from our friends pants <laughs> anyone <laughs> but anyway Oppo was yeah it would feel like come on can, can you come to our band but uh, Oppo was only so so we were a little bit sneaky to ask at first like uh, him to do just one tour and uh, festival gigs and uh, then we started to like <laughs> come on, because he had a uh, like regular job and uh, oh, okay. so uh, after, all, uh, after all he decided to stay in the band. So. 
And you stole him from his normal job? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> from the government, so... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you released the music video for Amongst Stars, um, and there are guest vocals by Anneke van Giesbergen. Uh, how did that happen? So why was she uh, on the song? Yeah, uh, we have cooperated with Anneke before. He mm -hmm. did some uh, like uh, special shows in Finland with us, and uh, I think first time we met him, her like uh, 96 or something on okay. tour. And uh, yeah, we always have some like discussion to make maybe do something together. And this time Jens was it was Jens's idea that one song could be like duetto kind of mm -hmm. thing. And so then I think it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I think so. And uh, and uh, then we yeah bling. Let's call Anneke, and uh, mm -hmm. that's how it was. Mm -hmm. And Anneke will join to us some gigs, like uh, <clears throat> in Finland we have like a couple uh, shows, festivals, when we yes. play this whole album. Mm -hmm. okay. So do you like, or how do you decide which guest musician fits which song? Is it like sometimes a random decision? Well, in Jens, uh, you, we didn't know these like musicians earlier, mm -hmm. when, what Jens booked, but uh, we trusted on Jens. But uh, earlier, they are like some musicians we respect or our friends or something. Mm -hmm. So, like earlier, we had uh, Sakari Kukko playing flutes and uh, mm -hmm. some saxophones, and he's like uh, he used to play in very famous, to us famous, uh, like progressive folk. Mm -hmm. Rock band in 70s, Beer Pauke, and still exists the band. Uh, so we wanted to have him to album. And so okay. it's some, sometimes cool to have like your own, yeah, like course. musical idols. Mm -hmm. Nice. So back to the music video. Um, so it's about death and light and amazing colors and nature's combined in the video. Uh, is nature a thing that is very important to you? Yes, it is. It's like uh, I think nature is one of the, if you can say, like biggest influences, has always been to our music and lyrical mm -hmm. themes, because uh, if you think about these Kalevala stories, those are like uh, stories when, from the time when people were believing some paganist like forest gods or whatever, yeah. and it's it's a Nordic thing, the, right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. So uh, I think it's nature is like something like there is so much to so much to uh, take mm. to the lyrics and uh, hard, hard to explain. But it fits better us than like uh, fast cars or mm. <laughs> something like themes like that. So yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Esa told in a, another interview that you were like doing new setup. Uh, or live setup uh, stuff uh, for this tour now. Mm. What changed to previous tours with your live setup? Well, the lights. I think we have like mm -hmm. more progr uh, programmed lights, so light show, you could say. And uh, we, uh, we wanted to a little bit, a uh, little bit like uh, go in that direction that it also could look a little bit better because. Uh, so far we haven't like thinking that too much so mm -hmm. uh, yeah that's one thing and uh, of course yeah we have a new sound guy and uh, new light guy and uh, we also have like some like stairs in the stage and th stuff like that which mm -hmm. is like uh, uh, you can <laughs> walk a little bit around like it just <laughs> looks <stairs>. cool <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it, I think it looks better. Yeah. I must admit, nice. it's uh, today it's the first time seeing you live. Yeah, for okay. me. Yeah. Great. I'm okay. very excited. Yeah. yeah, I hope you like it. <laughs> yeah, I think I will. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you also told that um, the festival slots in Finland concerning metal bands are getting lower, and you have mm. to like fight for slots with EDM bands. Mm. Uh, I think Esa and uh, the other Tommy yeah. told that. Yeah, I think some of the festivals which we used to play like uh, and used to go when we were kids, uh, like Ruiz Rock and Provincial Rock, there was, they are like going, especially Ruiz Rock is going like, we last time we played there we were only this kind of music with Mastodon, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
I could see it the, from the, the, the only two bands, you mean? Yeah, like from this scene. Okay. Otherwise, other bands were like, I had no idea what they are. And the audience <laughs> were like, you could see that they didn't know what, what's what's this. And mm -hmm. nowadays there is no room anymore to bands like the, uh, us, like mm -hmm. I think. But, uh, but th that's uh, uh, young young kids of the, today, they don't listen to that anymore. It's Is more it like so? rap things. Of course some, but like the main, mm -hmm. it's rap and hip hop and things okay. like this. Okay. But uh, also in the same time, there is a lot of like metal festivals and smaller festivals in mm -hmm. uh, which are like sold out every time yeah. In, yeah. In, in Finland and uh, elsewhere as well. So I don't complain in that way. So. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I'd like to read out a YouTube comment for you. <laughs> Uh, that one says, Amorphous are like a fine wine. With age, they only get more epic. So, yeah, I'd like to think that. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, uh, how do you manage being a band for that long time? Mm. Uh, it's just like, I, I couldn't imagine any, any other job. Because this okay. is what we have done since like we formed the band. We were like 15, 16 and... Uh, before that, we also already had like some bands and some uh, touring, small touring things. So uh, we were pretty young, and uh, yeah, this is just like it keeps on rolling, mm -hmm. and uh, no time to think like yeah. <laughs> too much in between. Yeah. So. Do, do you think it was easier back then being a band than no. it is today? No, actually, no, because uh, I think. <clears throat> as like uh, persons like in this band like everybody has like a little bit those hard, hard edges are getting softer and mm -hmm. we, are, we are not like arguing s so much about stupid things than we were of course when we were 20 or something mm -hmm. and uh, of course to us when having like uh, bigger venues and a professional crew yeah. it makes everything much easier so I think it's easier easier now, yeah, definitely, than mm -hmm. before. What do you think of bands like Ginger, for example? Mm. They seem like to, to be really up and coming right now. Mm. Um, how does it make you feel as a, uh, as an, I would say, old band in the mm. business? Um, how, how safe can you feel like continuing touring mm. the next, I don't know, 10 or 15 years? Well, it's better not to think too much, like mm. uh, like I've said like a million times, but when we were 20, we couldn't even imagine us to tour like when we are or doing this kind of music like 35 or uh, not to mention 45. So yeah. you never know what's yeah. gonna, gonna happen. Yeah. Of course, it now feels like a little bit makes makes me think about future if uh, we're still on the road in, in, after 15 years. but. Never say never, so I yeah. don't know. But so far we have like a uh, very good mood and feeling about this, and uh, there's no even mention that we should quit or anything. Mm -hmm. So there will be more albums and touring. Hopefully. So, yeah, <laughs> unless we are like getting heart attacks like <laughs> one in a time or something. But, but uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it still feels good. And uh, sometimes still there is some festivals when you're looking the lineup like. Ah, we feel quite young actually when he says <laughs> there's like Iron Maiden, Saxon and mm -hmm. Accept like bands we were listening like when we were 10 or 10 years old so mm -hmm. it's still sometimes like <laughs> believe me you will get there too <laughs> yeah I know <laughs> so what about your uh, 30th uh, anniversary mm. any plans for that uh, only plan that we should plan something and we have like uh, some oh, <laughs> schedule <laughs> schedule for that, but uh, it it's uh, we have to like decide to go to studio or concentrating mm -hmm. a little bit like to this anniversary. But it would be shame to not fix something special mm -hmm. to that. Wasn't it uh, with In Flames they like cr created their own festival? That would be an idea. Yeah, yeah, I I think so. yeah, we were <laughs> talking about that as well a few oh, really? years ago. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But there was too much, too much things we had to like do by ourselves, and we don't have a time. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, we had that idea as well, okay. like Sabaton had yeah. this and yeah. yeah. But let's see, it would be fun. But there is so much things we 
we don't know what to do. We should like, yeah, I don't know how much it would be like our our own festival then. Mm -hmm. So, okay, we'll see. Yeah. I'm very excited for the show tonight. Thank you. Uh, thank you for taking your time. Thank you. <laughs> all right. I hope you like the show. Yeah, I will. Yeah, all right. <laughs> thank you. Bye.